Hello everyone, welcome to A plus B I. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a nice quadratic equation with complex numbers. Z is a complex number and this channel is about complex numbers. What is a complex number? Well, a complex number can be written as A plus B I where A and B are real numbers and I is the square root of negative 1. If you wanted more information or if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I also have another channel called Cyber Math, maybe that's where you came from. If you did, let us know in the comment section down below. Okay, great. So how do we solve an equation like this? I'll be presenting three methods. I'm not exactly sure if they're all going to work nicely, but at least that's what I'm thinking about. So the first method is basically going to be, since the name of this channel is A plus PI, I'm going to replace Z with A plus PI because, not because it's the name of this channel only, but also it solves a lot of problems. So is it going to work in this case? Let's find out. So A plus PI squared plus I times A plus PI equals 1 plus I. Great. Now let's go ahead and expand it. When you square a sum, remember you square the first term, you square the second term, but I squared is negative 1. You probably knew that from here, right? It just follows from the fact that I is the negative uh, square root of negative 1. This is a very important fact that you should never ever forget, especially if you're dealing, dealing with complex numbers. So bi quantity squared is going to be b squared i squared, which is minus b squared. And then it'll be followed by 2abi plus ai plus bi squared again. That's minus b equals 1 plus i. So what are we supposed to do? Put the real parts together. And when I say real parts, A is the real part, B is the imaginary part. Of course, we have a different number now. So we can kind of put A squared minus B squared and minus B together, and then 2AB plus A together. That's going to be the imaginary part, and that's equal to 1 plus I. Nice. Now we can go ahead and set the real parts equal and co complex imaginary parts equal. So this means uh, a squared minus b squared minus b is equal to 1. And 2ab plus a is equal to 1 as well because that's considered 1i, right? Cool. That gives us a system of equations. a squared minus b squared minus b is equal to 1. And 2ab plus a is equal to 1. I mean, you can set them equal to each other. I'm not sure if that's going to help. Probably not. Uh, I could, let's see, hmm. here's what I can do. From the second equation, I can isolate A, right? Factor out an A, you'll get 2B or not 2B, that was an intentional, equals 1. And from here, A becomes 1 over 2B plus 1. By the way, you could also do the same thing for B. You could isolate B as well. You would just have to uh, subtract A and then divide by 2a, and that'll be b in terms of a. It doesn't matter which one. I'm, I'm not sure which one is going to give us a better result, but I like the first one better because it only has a variable in the denominator, not both the numerator and denominator. So this is what we're going to substitute in to the first equation. So we have an a there. Let's go ahead and replace it with 1 over 2b plus 1, and then minus b squared minus b equals 1. Probably uh, this is easiest, like add b squared plus b to both sides, put all the terms that are not a part of a fraction, and then cross multiply. So now if we multiply these, this times this is supposed to equal 1. And from here, we're going to get a nice cubic, right? Well, wishful thinking. Let's see. 2b cubed plus 2b squared plus 2b plus b squared, plus b, plus 1, equals 1. The nice thing about it is that the 1 cancels out. Cool. That gives us a 0, and now we can go ahead and combine like terms, 2b cubed, plus 3b squared, plus 3b, equals 0. We can factor out a b, 2b squared, plus 3b, plus 3, equals 0. If I didn't make any mistakes, I usually make mistakes, so I hope this time I haven't made any mistakes. Let me double check. 2b cubed plus 2b squared plus 2b. And then that should be it, right? 
and we add it right, and then that's our equation, and so on and so forth. So that kind of looks good to me. I hope it's good to you too. Okay, never mind. I just realized I forgot to square A. You see, I told you I was make mistakes. So I was supposed to square A here because it's A squared. So that will change things, of course. Let's go ahead and fix it. Uh-oh, the eraser won't stay. See, that's the problem these days. Maybe that's an update on notability, whatever. I don't like it. That's okay. So we're going to have this one instead. 1 over 2b plus 1 squared equals b squared plus b plus 1. So that's going to give us a cortic. Too bad. So this will be 4b squared plus 4b plus 1. That is the denominator. Multiply by this equals 1. Get the idea? I just skipped a step. I hope you don't mind. And then I'm going to go ahead and distribute 4b to the fourth plus 4b cubed plus 4b squared plus 4b cubed plus 4b squared plus 4b plus b squared plus b plus 1. A lot of terms. 4b to the fourth plus 8b cubed plus 8b squared plus 1. That's 9b squared. And then 5b plus 1 equals 0. Nice. Okay, not may, maybe not very nice. One of the things we can do is we can turn this into a perfect square. So one of the things you can definitely do is to solve the quartic equation is leave the b to the fourth and b cubed on the left-hand side and throw everything else on the right-hand side. And then you've got to add something to both sides to make it a perfect square. Just think about this. This is 2b squared squared. And we do need this times something else to make the 2ab or 2xy thing. But this term should be 2b or not 2b. So we're supposed to add 4b squared to both sides. But when you do that, you've got to be careful here. When you add 4b squared to both sides, this is going to be negative 5b squared minus 5b plus 1. Yes, the left-hand side is going to be a perfect square, which can be written like this. But the right-hand side, unfortunately, isn't. So we have to add one more thing, actually two more things, I guess, to make it a perfect square. So what I can do is kind of consider this as a squared, and then I can add 2ba. So in other words, 2k times this. And then, of course, at the end, I have to add k squared. Make sense? So this is what we're adding to both sides. It's going to look like this. Hmm. Let me think. 4kb squared plus 4kb plus k squared and then minus 5p squared minus 5p minus 1. Now the left hand side became 2b squared plus 2b plus k quantity squared. And the right hand side, which is this, became 4kb squared plus 4k minus 5 times b. Wait, is this quadratic in b? I think so. Then I should probably include more terms. Let me think. Oh, this should be included. Yes. That should be part of the b squared term. So it's like 4k minus 5 b squared. These two. And then I have the 4k b and 5p. So 4k minus 5 b. That kind of gives me an idea plus k squared minus 1 equals 0. No, it's not equal to 0. They're already equal. Too bad. Okay, so we have the equal sign. Left-hand side is a perfect square. We need to make right-hand side a perfect square. And we can do so by setting the discriminant equal to 0. But there's an easy way to do it. Whenever you see these two terms, I, should all, I always want you to think about this. You see that? It's 2b plus 1 squared. When they are the same, they have to be like this for some reason. So that means that k squared minus 1 is equal to 1, which means k squared is equal to 2. Then k is equal to root 2. But then this is not going to work. Is it going to work? I don't think so. I don't know. Maybe I made a mistake, but this is the process. You can hopefully take it from here. Because I need to talk about my second method, okay? So allow me to finish this. Uh, oops, that's not 2b. Come on, I got stuck on 2b. So here's the second method. The second method is just going to use the quadratic formula directly, because why not? Let's go ahead and put everything on the same side and just use the quadratic. It's very easy, right? Negative b 
plus minus the square root of b squared, that's i squared, minus 4ac, but that's going to give us a plus sign, because double negation, divided by 2. That should be fairly easy to do. Negative i plus minus the square root of negative 1 plus 4, that is a negative 3, I mean a positive 3, right? Not a negative 3. That's a positive 3. And then plus 4i. Nice. I think I can easily square root that. Think about 2 plus i squared. That is 4 plus i squared plus 4i. This is negative 1, 3 plus 4i. Nice. And that's, of course, the principal square root. But who cares? We're going to have the plus minus anyways. So it's going to be like negative i plus minus, what was it? 2 plus i divided by 2. And now this splits into two solutions, negative i plus 2 plus i divided by 2. i cancels out and we get z equals 1. Uh-oh, that's a special solution. And negative i minus 2 minus i divided by 2. And that should be negative 1 minus i. Yay, those are the solutions. Let's go ahead and talk about the third method because I think the third method is awesome. Caution, it doesn't apply to all problems. But here's the thing. When it does, it does. Okay. I just, I'm just thinking about this it this way. I multiply z by i more than z and I get 1 plus i. Then can't I write 1 plus i as 1 times 1 plus i? Now compare these two things. You're going to realize, uh-oh, z equals 1 works. Awesome. That's amazing, right? You could also get that by replacing z with 1 on the left. 1 plus i equals 1 plus i. So definitely z equals 1 is a solution. How do you find the other solution? Good question. You could do polynomial division or use Vieta's formulas. What is Vieta's formulas? It just tells us, okay, if you have a quadratic equation, the sum of the roots is negative b over a, which is negative i. If one of the solutions is 1, then z2 is just going to be negative 1 minus i. Okay? And that brings us to Wolfram Alpha and to the end of this video. Good job, Wolfram Alpha, by the way. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.